Right, so the other big project I'm working on at the moment is a World of Darkness campaign. Uh, World of Darkness being a, an RPG similar to Dungeons & Dragons, meaning you get a whole bunch of people t together at a table, sit down, roll some dice, tell a story, kill some stuff. Um, at least in D&D you do. World of Darkness, no one's died in yet, actually. Uh, but, anyways, uh, I am currently running this game with, what is it, four different players, um, and the session that I'm talking about tonight uh, happened to have two players, Jeremy and Ryan, uh, that both met at a party and started experiencing some supernatural activity type stuff. They both saw a ghost, uh, they saw another ghost at a park uh, that had clearly been strangled or something, dot, dot, dot. Um, and yes, uh, both of their separate paths happen to have led them to Timmins Manufacturing, uh, which is this building here, which is the purpose of the demonstration today. Uh, so, I drafted this up in Unreal Engine 3 and uh, just using the level editor and the goal was to give players um, a little bit more visceral uh, and immersive a space to to understand what was going on. Um, World of Darkness is a much more freeform system than uh, than Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, you know there's no rigid uh, hex or square tile set to be using you just sort of describe the events that are going on and uh, let people decide what to do. Which is great, uh, that's what I love about World of Darkness, but it does sometimes make things a little bit difficult, uh, especially for me just getting started, um, to, to describe a scene well enough for players to really have an idea of what's going on. So I figured this 3D mock-up would give them, uh, give them something to work with. Uh, which it would have. Uh, it would have been great, but our, my players needed, or uh, greatly preferred to be playing at their place rather than mine, uh, so what I ended up doing was just taking screenshots of this mock-up since I didn't have a laptop or something to, to transport it on. But if I didn't, I would have had them actually wandering around this physical space as we played the game. Um, but I am at least going to document uh, my work on it, uh, just to have a permanent copy of, because I would like that sort of thing. Uh, so yes, Timmins Manufacturing. Um, the ghost of the story worked here in life, um, and it was the source of much strife for him, uh, trying to to support to both of his families, uh, which is what ultimately drove him to kill himself, was uh, just the stress of of being able to, to support both of his families. Uh, so, uh, yes. Key scene is when the players uh, see the ghost attack one of his form or no, attack his replacement in this building. So here we are, big building. Um, players uh, were given instructions to investigate supernatural activity in the building and dig up information on David Richardson. Um, they were not aware that the that David Richardson had been killed, actually. Uh, so, and they still aren't, as of uh, time of making this video. Um, but, yes, so I had them set to it. Uh, Jeremy happened to be incredibly good at, at larceny and stealthy type things, uh, so he very quickly found this gap in the fence. Um, uh, to get through, uh, which was placed there intentionally. Um, yeah, he didn't need to pick a lock or make any athletics rolls to get over the fence or anything else, uh, which I had been planning for. Uh, he just, you know, hey, a weak spot, great. Uh, so once they made it inside, I presented them with a couple of different points of entry, um, which were scaling this, which would have resulted in a few athletics rolls, uh, you know, which I'd have described as, as getting on top of these crates or shimmying up these vents that you're seeing, um, and eventually either climbing into the building through one of the windows, which would have placed them at different sections of the office and interior, or if they were really good and made it all the way up to the top, um, I didn't actually put one here, but uh, there would have been another entry point via 
the ventilation systems rather than just being able to climb on it they'd have been able to go inside and pretty much have access to go wherever they wanted in the building as stealthily as they wanted but instead uh, they chose to use Jeremy's larceny skills to come in through this door here um, what you're seeing floating there are teleport pads um, just for convenience so you could interact with this door and pop out in here uh, on the other side of it in this door uh, so that is what they chose to do was lockpick this door again Jeremy has just ridiculous uh, larceny skills uh, so he got it in pretty much one shot um, so yes they found themselves in this warehouse um, man I put most of my work into into just getting this to look acceptable played a lot with different textures and and so forth. Uh, but yes, the perspective that they had of it, because if you remember, I was just giving them screenshots, uh, was roughly this. Um, so I instructed them that there was a security camera uh, right about at the perspective of this. Uh, so what they did was uh, just wander along this side wall here and, uh, you know, duck between these kind of crates and so forth, making stealth checks along the way. Um, so they managed to, to get to here, uh, where I told them that they were able to, to catch some stairs uh, up, up to, to this catwalk. Uh, this catwalk's going to be super important later in the story, uh, but for now... Uh, they just decided to follow it uh, into the office proper. Uh, and from here, they wandered through a series of office structures like this. And, uh, you know, dodging a patrolling security guard along the way and digging through some filing cabinets. Uh, there they discovered that... Uh, David Richardson had been embezzling from the company, although they still do not know why. Uh, they eventually made it past an elevator into a stairwell, which they took up to the second floor and found, or the third floor rather, um, and found the CEO of Timmins Manufacturing. They found his office. Uh, slightly more difficult time picking that lock, but Jeremy got through it in a couple of rolls. Um, and once inside, snooped around for a bit. Didn't find too much else of interest, uh, apart from uh, a note from the CEO uh, to a woman named Molly, uh, who the players do not yet know is Molly Richardson, uh, which is David Richardson's wife, of course. Um, so so far, the the players have mostly been have entirely been interacting with. Um, David Richardson's mistress rather than his first wife uh, and and that family uh, who is Catriona Staples, the boyfriend uh, John Escott, their daughters um, but they haven't actually met Molly yet so it'll be interesting to see uh, whether they choose to continue investigating the the family that they already know or if they decide to jump ship over to Molly um, Either way, uh, I suspect they'll they'll put it all together fairly quickly and learn about uh, the duality of his life, figure out why he was embezzling, and and get his motives for for suicide and uh, for staying behind in the afterlife to protect the families and provide for the families the the stable life that he couldn't in life. Um, so yeah, quick aside, uh, that's sort of my goal uh, for this story. Um, it's very by the books. This is all from the, the World of Darkness Ghost Stories expansion. Um, and uh, yes, the, the central theme to that is the story is called No Way Out. And uh, the idea is uh, suicide is, is not an answer to, to that kind of problem. Uh, you're going to get... Uh, screwed over if you don't um, do the best that you can with your life um, and there are strong forces to keep you in the afterlife um, Jeremy and Ryan's story this this whole no way out thing is is unique of the three sort of starter stories that I'm trying to tell um, each of my other two players both have their own story uh, from ghost stories 
uh, that they're playing 